Today's topic introduces and really delves into how our staff is operating virtually here at Defiance College. You know, a couple weeks ago, when we saw the potential of heading into a virtual operation here, um, I was initially unsure of just how we were going to move in that direction. I mean, there was just so much uh, rumors and hearsay, but You know, then as Bill Walsh uh, once told me when we worked together on American Football Quarterly, uh, he said, you're only as good as the ability uh, you have to create a quality contingency plan. So I always remember that moving ahead. And, um, you know, so now um, just basically decided, hey, it's time to create a contingency plan and take advantage of what we have to see as an opportunity to operate virtually. And who knows what we're going to learn from this moving forward. So um, the reality of the situation is <clears throat> today with social dis- distancing, uh, we had to keep some things in mind. Uh, first of all, uh, our staff um, had to operate out of pretty much our home bases. And it might be for an extended period of time. There was no like, oh, it's definitely over at whatever time it is. So you had to be ready for the long haul. The second uh, reality has been that communication would be critical among our st- ourselves and our players. Uh, and really, it's like they, the players amongst themselves in groups being connected, our assistant coaches to the position coaches, and then from the head coach down to the whole program to keep everybody um, on the same page moving forward uh, through these uncertain times. And then the third part of this, which is interesting, is I've been reading all kinds of articles um, out there right now, you know, this football season could be played as early as July. Um, they were talking, I saw an article the other day where it's like July, August, September, because the coronavirus may be coming back in the fall. So due to revenue and all these types of things, that's one of the things on the table. So we don't really know um, exactly um what is going to happen? Or some people are saying the, they may there may be a season, but no fans in the stadium. There's so many things that are getting thrown out there, but I know the powers that be at the NCAA and all the high-powered athletic directors, everybody's going to put something together. And the key for us as a program is we want to be flexible. So anything that we go about to create has to have a flexibility built into it. Now, with those key issues in mind, it's imperative that we needed uh, the following three areas addressed. Uh, one, we, we definitely need a, uh, a toolkit to operate remotely. We felt that was number one. Number two, uh, we needed to make sure we had a solid organizational system to aid us in leading ourselves and the program forward. And number three... Um, we need to make sure we were built properly uh, with a set of ideas and projects moving forward to make sure we're ready when the season comes. And all that had to keep flexibility in mind. Now, what I'd like to do is give you um, a, a basically lift the veil for you as these are the things that we're using here in our program that um, – seem to be working just fine as we move forward. And obviously, you know, things may adjust uh, by, by each week as we move forward. But here, here's some of what, what we're looking at. Number one area we talked about was the toolkit. Now, uh, there are three things that I felt that we had to have in our toolkit. Number one, uh, video conferencing tools that most importantly give us the opportunity for screen sharing as well as holding full team meetings because you know screen sharing would be important because we may be watching video or showing something that's on our screen uh, as we're working together as a staff or communicating with the players and I'll get into that in a little bit so we looked at um, there, there's the real popular one out there right now is zoom I think it's zoom.us uh, you can look at that. There is a free version of that. Um, there are some issues of how many people can be on that in the free version. Uh, here at Defines College, we use Google uh, Google Meetings. They used to be called Google Hangouts. Uh, it's our choice because that's how a lot of our professors would conduct classes. So you could have a large amount of people on this, thus a team meeting. So uh, that's a direction we went into. 
And then the second part of the toolkit is we needed to be able to generate ideas, not not just by texting them to each other where, or in a group text. They're, they're, we were able to take a look at some things that there's a fella uh, by the name of Doug Samuels. I think he was on Football Scoop, and he had put together how they use something called Slack. And I read his article, and it really made some sense to me. And uh, so I looked at it, and it's a free software that we use amongst our staff, and you can set up channels. So a channel might be on a particular topic, like we had recently created a virtual visit uh, for recruits to take a look at. So we had hashtag virtual visit, so anybody working on that could give insight in that channel. Then there could be another channel that was set up that might be, here's uh, the offense, here's the defense, here's a project on anything within the program. So now you would make comments on that and the whole staff was within that. And I could even see that moving forward that our assistant coaches can create their own group uh, with their position in Slack where they may have questions and they can communicate that way. And what's good about this is it gets you to communicate in appropriate channels about a topic. So we've set those channels up with these various topics. And what this does is it helps us generate ideas and potential projects. Um, the thing is, I've noticed, and from talking to some others about Slack, it's not necessarily a very good way. You can't really... It's hard to manage a project this way, but you can certainly come up with great ideas. And I want to shout out to Doug for having that uh, on Football Scoop because we all learn from each other in this profession. And then the third part of the toolkit <coughs> is um, something that we needed to have in place for project management, a software for project management. And I looked out there and I saw a bunch of different ones. Uh, Asana is a good one. Nosby is one that I had used before when I was in Kansas at Bethany College. And uh, we were able, my, um, you know, my operations guy was also my super backs coach at the time, Tyler Gadwood, uh, sort of became a sleuth on how to use Nosby. And we were able to I mean, we had a really small staff, but the perception was, you know, you really couldn't tell the difference between a, a tiny NAI school and a major college, the type of the type of things that were getting done. And Nosby had a lot to do with it. And a shout out to Tyler because, uh, I mean, he was a fantastic football coach and a great operations guy as well that helped me get through that process of learning how to use Nosby. So I chose Nosby because it was something that I had had before. And had some success in operating with it. I use it uh, to manage our my personal tasks in there. All of our coaches have it to manage their tasks. And then also there's an area in there where I will assign uh, projects to coaches. And when we have staff meetings, a staff meeting is listed at a, as a project. So I generally have staff meetings um, at the beginning of the week and the end that we have a Monday staff meeting and a Friday staff meeting, a pre and a post, mind you. So we set the agenda on one end and that is a project of here's the stuff that we need to all get working on. So everybody's communicated and we've set the agenda for the week. And then when we meet again on Friday, then we load it up and there's a post uh, project of basically where we've come along. And in between what's happening on Monday and Friday, these two different um, projects, we have Another one that takes Monday, and it's just a working document, so people can can look at that. It's shared, and you can see where we are coming along on various tasks that we had set on Monday. So that's how I set that up for my staff meetings that go early and late. So that is using Nosby. So that's everything regarding our toolkit, at least, you know, some introduction toward how we use it. Um, the next thing... I wanted to bring up is our organizational uh, system. And if you're a head coach, uh, it's really important that you get organized first. You know, you can sit there and just start barking out all kinds of commands, do this, do that. If you're not organized, then I believe it's going to show 
all the way down to your players in the program. So I think, number one, when you have an organizational system in place, it's important the head football coach is truly organized. So get yourself organized first. Make sure you have everything in place. And one thing I like to do is I set up what what I what I call an ideal week. Right? And in setting up an ideal week, I have this on a spreadsheet. And I take each day of the week, and there's a specific focus for that day. And then I log Log in and I block the times where certain things uh, need to be done that are important to what I am working on in my week. So this is as this is for a head coach, right? and what happens within this is each day should have a specific focus. So for instance, Mondays and Fridays for me are internal and external meetings, you know, staff meetings, external meetings that I'm doing and all this stuff today is, you know, worth Google meetings for me, but anything I'm setting up, I like to set those up on Mondays and Fridays. So that's how those meetings are done. And I lock them into there. And then Tuesday and Thursday, what I do is that, that for me is set up for projects and content creation, whatever it is, working on my playbook, working on very, projects that we're moving forward on uh, shooting this podcast that w- that is something that is j- done on one of those days a Tuesday and a Thursday and then Wednesday I designate for our whole staff and myself a deep work day we are to have no meetings and I want we want to come in lock in get totally focused after we get the day started up on our deep work where we can delve into this thing and make sure we're working on what's most important uh, for us and our program. So that is how I set myself up as a head coach. Now, there's obviously a bit more to that, but that's the the general idea of, of how I get myself going. So it's important if you're a head coach out there that I think you get yourself organized first. Then the second part is staff organization. So once the ideal week is set up for the head coach, I create an ideal week for our assistant coaches. So where they know how it meshes with my week. So for instance, uh, they need to know when the pre and post staff meetings are on Monday and Friday for us they're at nine o'clock in the morning. And then when are the offensive and defensive meetings going to be? Right. Uh, when does the head coach have administrative meetings? And so administrative meetings might be, hey, we're working on public relations. We're working on fundraising, working on recruiting, where I work with one of our assistant coaches that is responsible for that particular area. And what happens is then they're able to the brief me and I can give them some insight and we basically brainstorm in that session and say, Hey, this is what we want to do moving forward. And then they can run their own meetings on Tuesdays and Thursdays, uh, depending on whatever they're working on. And they set their own agenda that I can be involved in or don't necessarily have to be involved in because we know where we're going by working together. And then there's also other things like, uh, academics, And recruiting, those are meetings, and then player development meetings. Those are all things where in the ideal week for the assistant coaches, anything that is set up in there, like academic meetings for us might, they wouldn't necessarily be every week, they might be every other week. So you set those things up and it would just, uh, maybe it might be academic meetings and player development meetings are every other week rotating when when they're set up according to that. Now, that is, those are two of the issues with, with uh, our organizational system. The, the final part that I think was, is very important for us is that we want to be able to designate projects. Right? And sometimes guys think a task is a project. What is, what is it? So I've defined to our coaching staff uh, that basically a project is something that requires three or more tasks to complete. All right. So if it, it, and sometimes multiple members would be on a particular project. Oftentimes they are. So what I do is I'll, we, I may create a project myself and this is all happening in Nosby. Our assistant coaches can create projects within themselves and share that among other members on the staff. Now, it's important that in delegating projects, once you've created the project that let's say you're working on, that 
when there's a task in there, only one person is assigned to a task. Because if you've got, like, if you just put it out there, it's like every, you don't know who's going to get it done. So it's important that you set the expectation of the project. This is what we want it to look like. You set the deadline, uh, and then you follow up virtually uh, in the process. And I think those are the three things when you're designating projects, ultimately, to get things done, as uh, David Allen said in his great book, get, Getting Things Done. And I think that's important as you are operating virtually to make sure you're getting things done. Now, a little bit of um, the, the last part of this is regarding ideas moving forward. Now, flexibility is key, as we'd mentioned before. Um, I've got five ideas for you that we are working on and coaches out there, because we have a lot of coaches that listen to this and certainly watch this. Um, Here's five things to keep in mind of some things that we are working forward on. And you may have some other great ideas. And I'd love it if you'd share some of that with me on message me on Twitter or shoot me an email, you know, anything like that, because we're always looking to get a little bit better. Uh, number one is virtual meetings with players. All right? uh, we do have weekly academic meetings that we set on Tuesdays with our players to just check on them, to see what help they need, and make sure that they're on target to get what, uh, what we want done there. The second virtual meeting that, that we have through Google Meetings is football-related meetings. Now, where you are, your the rules of your affiliation will change. It's it's interesting. Um, yesterday, I was talking to my brother um, who coaches at the University of Kentucky, and you know they're only allowed two hours per week on virtual meetings. Where in Division Three at this level, we have uh, a protocol that says basically we can have spring ball through virtual meetings. So we're allowed sixteen sessions with our players. And we just dictate what days those are. And then, um, and then our, we have position meetings and a variety of different kind of meetings that are football related where we share video and so forth. But if you're coaching at the high school level, your rules may be different. So, but I think you just want to check your affiliation rule and be able to share um, football related information because I think it keeps your players motivated because they're fired up and excited about them getting the opportunity to play football um, you know, when we get through all this. The second idea that we work through this is uh, leadership seminars. I think it's important that, uh, you know, I, I, oftentimes in the summer, I give a read to our players and tell them, hey, buy this book on Amazon, uh, and then we'll talk about it in training camp. So I think books to read are important things where you know your players can learn something from it and uh, really represent your program in the proper way. And the other thing is that a lot of these players are just starting to learn how to do and, and that is uh, listen to podcasts, podcasts on leadership, podcasts on developing themselves. I love Jocko Podcast. It's my favorite podcast of all. And uh, But but I, I do listen to about six or seven different podcasts and sort of roll them through if I'm driving in the car or just putting them you know, on in the house, you know, while I'm working, you know, so, so that's, uh, I, I think, you know, recommending some good podcasts to the players, I think is good. Uh, so it, it will get them thinking a little bit differently. Anything motivational is great. And uh, I think podcasts are a great way to go. Um, the other thing is, I like presentations to players to discuss a video or concept. I know, you know, Javon Johnson likes to, uh, you know, our defensive coordinator will say, hey, I was watching this cool video on uh, YouTube. And he may share that with the defensive players. And that's a great way to create a discussion on motivating and what's what's important to you. Maybe the concept of finishing, which is so important today for these young young men when they're playing on the field to understand what finishing really is on and off the field. And, you, and it's just not a part-time deal. It's an all-the-time deal. So you can share that as part of your presentation. Um, then number three is working out without weights. There's all types of things to look at with functional training because we know that, hey, we might want to send out something to our players, but, um, you know, they, they may not have access to a weight room. So what are some other things they can do? So I highly recommend taking a look at some of the functional training that Navy SEALs do and other special forces members. And there's all kinds of good stuff out there to get their body into balance and eventually 
they'll be able to do uh, to get in the weight room, um, hopefully once everything is lifted. But um, working out without weights is number three. Number four, uh, as far as an idea moving forward, is developing e-courses for your players. And it could be by position. Here, what we do is we start off with position manual. So video position, and we write them up, and then we start to create and we expand on that and put like, here's what it takes to play linebacker. Here's what it takes to play defensive line. And we put together the fundamental skills and drills and techniques, and we, we download video, we create things. There's other uh, friends we may have at other programs uh, around the country that might say, here's my drill tape. Let me share that with you. And we share ours with other guys out there. And we put together a position manual um, uh, in an e-course format. And then we also have um, a video playbook that we work on that helps us out when we get to training camp. So in training camp, we want to have shot all of our installation and videos in advance. So we get all that ready to go because I know about I don't know about you guys out there, coaches. I lose my voice a lot of times in training camp. So it's nice to have a good voice uh, presenting to the players as you are rolling through training camp. So I like to shoot all my video in advance, my lectures, and then have that ready for them and pre-do all of my tests. Uh, for each position as we do this. And so we generally do it where uh, I run the offense and Javon runs a defense. And, um, you know, we set that up in advance and then the, each of the position coaches have their role within this e-course. So that's that's what we do in there as well. Uh, in the video playbook, I also like to put uh, video of a coach. Let's say I'm analyzing an opponent, like a, it could be a, uh, a scouting report, a video scouting report, where I think Coach Warehan explained to me where I can take, uh, what is that deal? It's a quick time, and I, and I can uh, capture my screen, which is some of what you're seeing on this when you're watching this on YouTube, um, is I can capture my screen and talk into it even. And here I am analyzing a play or technique or whatever it might be. And that is a great teaching module. And the last thing I want to share with you is something that if you have it, you're lucky. We do have one here. It's VAR coaching. It's virtual reality coaching. And what we do in that case is we shoot a 360 degree uh, camera of our practice. And then we use this generally with quarterbacks, can use it with linebackers, really can use it in any position. And we, they put these uh, virtual reality goggles on. It puts them into the situation. And we record um, back during the season, we would record our players uh, going through a particular play. And then we could record that. And now a coach can take that and he can voice over that video insert diagrams, those types of things. And that's sort of a next level thing that if you are interested in VAR coaching, just reach out to me and I'll give you a great contact uh, if you if you want to get that as a coach. But it's, it's a great program. And um, I think it helps you uh, operate virtually to yet another level. But um, thank you so much for listening today to this podcast. And um, I want to thank uh, everybody out there and stay safe.